Have you been following all this AI stuff? I'm kind of fascinated by it. And the, like the implications for it musically, I don't even know. Like That's what I, I was interested in, you know, because you've, you've got decades in the industry watching all this. We've already gone into the era of like, I mean, drum machines have been around forever. For sure. I think that was the thing with like the Smashing Pumpkins. They uh, originally were playing with a drum machine. Mm -hmm. And then they had some guy be like, look, get a real drummer and you guys are a hit. Right. But drum machines have been around forever and they've been getting better and better. And now a lot of bands don't even use real drums mm -hmm. because what is it? Didn't you do a thing where like all of your drums can be purchased, like the sounds? Yep. Yeah. What, what? So on uh, splice.com, you can go and purchase my Pete Parada's toolkit pop punk sound pack, which is 350 snippets and loops and different beats from from that era, late 90s, early 2000s, pop punk stuff like that feel. So all different uh, tempos, fills, feels, you can piece a whole song together. The Italian guy that just hit me up, he bought my sound pack and made the song and he's like, hey, I'd like you to do a whole custom track. You know, I like this. So, yeah. you know, worked from there. But yeah, you can take that stuff. It sounds like I played on your song. That's like, crazy. Yeah, so there's so much stuff out there where like, you can, I mean, even there's single snare hits, Tom hits. You can take pieces of my kit and put it together. It'll sound like me. I think Carter did that. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I don't know for which song, but some of the songs that we're working on are more produced in like a little bit of electronic and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so... I'm pretty sure he like he takes the sound clip from you playing and then just yeah move it around yeah pastes it and edits it and it's like mm -hmm. making these these hits that it sounds like you're playing and he's playing for you it's kind of a it's kind of crazy so here's what I find interesting you know being a drummer you've been experiencing the replacement of drums with drum machines for a long time mm -hmm. but now we're moving into AI voices. And we're getting really close to just literally replacing every member of the band. And we're probably really close to the point where you can go to an AI and say, AI, play me a pop punk song about breaking up with my girlfriend. Right. And then it will just make this like pop punk emo yeah. song. I know. I mean, it, to me, I'm like, are we heading to a place where, you know, I can write a song on guitar and go, wow, that sounds like an Amy Mann song and tell AI here's my song, here's my melody, can you replace my voice with Amy Mann's voice? Like, yeah. you know, will I have this song? that In my head I can hear it, but there's no way in hell I can get her to sing on it. But, you know, We're are there, we man. are we headed to that? Like, that's scary. Like, I was listening to uh, Kevin Smith's podcast and they were talking about AI from a filmmaking standpoint. And, uh, and their point was, yes, you can take you know, the script for the Terminator and Star Wars and Deadpool and throw them into a AI and say, make, spit me out a new story, but will, and you'll get a very generic version back. Will AI be able to add the nuance that a writer would like, oh, well, this character has this tweak or this, you know, and that's what I'm wondering, like, because once we hit that, I, I think that's yes, terrible. But, but even for now, what I think they'll do is they'll say, AI, write me a song. I want it in this tempo, in this style, with this kind of vocals. You'll get back an 80% version, and then you'll say, okay, let's clean this up, put that little twist on it, we're good. Yeah, I'll take it from here. Yeah, yeah there, was, there was a service that I was uh, screwing around with that does AI song generation, and it's rudimentary. What they have is, they have a basic algorithmic drum machine, they have basic algorithmic synth, so it's, it's fairly rudimentary. But you could go in and say, I want rock, I want hard rock, I want it to be moderately fast and aggressive, and then it will give you 60% of a song, and that's your starting point, and you can say, oh, that's pretty good. Okay, now let me, let me finish it off, fill yeah, it out, and put that hook in it. Here. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, for me, like, I'm both fascinated and terrified by it, because, like, interesting that that could happen, but kind of takes the fun out of it you know if, if i wake up in the morning with an idea for a song and i run downstairs and i start voice memoing before it disappears and then i by the end of the day i can have recorded the whole thing that's exciting for me if i wake up and go computer write me a song 160 <laughs> beats per minute make it aggressive you know or write I'm me sad a, today write me write me a ballad right write me a country song include screen door pickup truck dirt road go and it's you there like, baby like I, I you just, know what you as, know what really scares me about this is the feedback loop, 
because what we currently have is this is this is this is an apocalypse scenario. Do you know do you know what the gray goo apocalypse is? No. So gray goo references like nanobots. Okay. And they'll start consuming matter and self-replicating until the point where you have so many nanobots, it's a gray goo eating everything and creating more of itself until the planet's destroyed, right? Okay. I feel like we have a digital version of that coming where humans have created all of this culture and we have this, this library on the internet of all these different ideas. So we build things like chat GPT and what it does is it, it's a predictive text model that when you ask it a question, all it does is calculate the likelihood of a word occurring after another word. So it sounds like it's giving you smart insight or whatever. Right. But what happens when we start writing songs with AI, making movies with AI, the input to the AI becomes itself, right? right? So if you have a predictive text model writing a script, it's writing a script based off of what humans created. But after 10 years of this, the AI will be programmed to produce scripts based off the scripts it wrote. It wrote, yeah. And so when you make a copy of a copy of a copy, eventually you're going to get... Well, you've erased humanity entirely. Yeah. And yeah. then humans are going to be broken brained individuals who have no understanding because the AI, like, uh, so there's a, a viral uh, a viral post where someone tells chat GPT two plus two equals five. And it says, no, that's wrong. It's four. And go, no, you're wrong. I'm telling you it's five. And it goes, okay, I'm sorry. It's five. You're going to get that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then what happens when the input models break? A year from now, ChatGPT genuinely believes 2 plus 2 is 5. 10 years from now, there's kids who are like, computer, what's 2 plus 2? 5. And they go, okay. Right. Now, and they'll never know because the AI runs everything. Yeah. I think the well, only outcome there is total collapse of civilization if we become reliant on AI. But I mean, I feel like that's what we already do with our media. Like we push a, a narrative like, well, here's this thing. Uh, is that really true? We're saying it's true. And, in, and it, you know, it gets repeated enough. And then you ask somebody, hey, what do you feel about that? Well, it's this and this and this. Yeah. Well, why do you know that? Well, I saw it on the news. Yep. It's like, what, what, what if you, I told you that's not true? Well, it can't be. Have you ever heard of cytogenesis? No. There's a, you ever, you ever see the comic XKCD? Mm -mm. They, it's this, uh, this guy's kind of, you know, he's a bit of an insufferable intellectual type, but he's got some good takes. He's got some good takes. And this one is how Wikipedia fabricates information. And so... The, the, the joke he uses is the invention of the scroll lock key on a keyboard. Mm -hmm. And he says, what happens is somebody for no reason goes on Wikipedia and makes up a fake fact and just puts it in there. The scroll lock key was invented by so-and-so in 1970. Mm -hmm. A journalist who's writing a story looking for a quick reference will go to Wikipedia, see it, and then say, oh, okay, and write it into their article without fact checking. Mm -hmm. Someone will then go on Wikipedia and say, what, what, what is this? There's no citation on here. They'll grab the article that was just written, oh. attach it to the fact, now it's a creating this yeah cytogenesis, mm -hmm. and they'll be like, Google is your friend, guys, use sources, and then they'll use the... Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like we're already in the death spiral. Yeah, I of, mean, that feels like what we've been living in already, especially the last three years. Yeah. And the, the crazy thing about it is, for me, I do news commentary and then a news commentary show with guests. And I tell people all the time, like, you realize I'm reading the mainstream media. It's like, I read the New York Times. I don't necessarily trust them all the time. So I'll try and fact check and look for multiple sources. And if multiple sources are saying something happened, we can only operate on the assumption it happened. But holy crap, that's not always true. Yeah. Like with the Covington kids in, in the Lincoln Memorial. Hmm. Every major outlet said, you remember the story, right? I, the kids standing on the steps in the Lincoln Memorial and the Native American guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Every major outlet says, this kid did, did something bad. All the major outlets say Kyle Rittenhouse was like a murderer or whatever. And you have to actually look for the source material and get break through. But this means, you know, I can't read every single academic report. I can't watch every single video. We're already here. Even the people you think are doing the best jobs possible are trapped in the same maelstrom as everybody else. And we're getting flushed on the toilet. Yeah, well, and they're trapped in it and also kind of beholden to... This is the this is the narrative that we are going with. You don't want to be on the wrong side of this. Look at what happens to those people. They're over there in the corner of shame. You yeah, know? I mean that sounds like Mao Cultural Revolution stuff. Yeah, you know this this podcast is called the Culture War, but I wasn't like literally intending on it to talk about nothing but the culture war. But I just feel like it's going to happen with everybody. Mm -hmm. 
there's going to be some element of it where every conversation is going to mention. I'm hoping that if enough people say, hey, that's kind of fucked up, that people are all marching in lockstep. We need some original thought. Maybe maybe that'll be the path forward. But that requires people to say, I am Spartacus. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not just point at you and be like, you be Spartacus. I'll be over here hiding in the bushes. Yeah, that's enough. You keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the weirdest thing about it. It looks like you can take it. It's like, yeah, but it's it's lonely. You know, be be nice to spread the slaps around a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if the end result of all of this is people like you, people like me, people who are listening to a show like this, the ones who are willing to speak out, speak up, or at the very least prepare, all of the people who are just going to say whatever they think they have to say will end up in a really bad position. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you, if, if I, I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, this is hilarious. Uh, I did my first ad for safeandreadymeals.com, which is like emergency food prep. Yeah. And instantly you get corporate press mocking me. Vice is like, Tim Pool's a prepper. Look how corny and cringe this is Mm -hmm. and i'm just like i don't care you know uh i actually it makes me laugh if you are of such weak mind that you would not have a first aid kit water or food because someone got made fun of and you're scared of being made fun of you will die yeah when a blizzard comes yeah 